Eureka, come on. We're live. Come on. Come on. Hi, guys. Just kidding. <laughs> so welcome to episode, is this eight or nine? Eight. Eight. Okay. Episode eight of the antivirus edition of Roll with the Fox. So today, we have our topics uh, across different platforms. Um, we're in the gi, so let's right dive, dive right into it. The first one is, how do I uh, defend the back take with the gi? Is it different from no gi? Because uh, Firas, uh, Zahadi, and I did a video uh, maybe six months, a year ago, how to defend back take. So if you want to know how to defend the back take, Again, this is probably a 40 minute long video specifically on that one position. Uh, it's on uh, TriStar Gym channel. Um, but the question is, is there a difference between gi and no gi? Um, in some subtleties, yes, but generally speaking, no. Um, you have to worry about the collar chokes and uh, uh, sort of uh, bow and arrow chokes. Uh, so you have to pay attention, you have to be, pay closer attention to where your hands are. Uh, but generally speaking, I, I will try to defend the position uh, as well as I can. Again, if, if, if the guy is already on my back, so let's look at some of the positions that uh, we use with Firas. Um, so Enrique is already on my back. If I can, I will try to swim my elbows in and try to... If I can go down, I'm, now I'm not subject to any chokes, and yes, I'm still in a, in a bad position, but I will try to now come out and scramble, okay? Um, same thing, uh, if, if I really get into a lot of trouble, if I'm really caught badly, um, you know, I will try to, try to go up high. I'm trying to ride him high, so that way he keeps pushing me down. But as that's happening, I'm trying to bring his, his head across. Um, so now I have to worry about the mount. I, I'm no longer in danger of a choke. So the same principles and same escapes that we use um, is uh, the same gi or no gi. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to also emphasize, uh, by the way, this question was asked on, I believe, Instagram, got a lot of likes, Eric and his dog. So I hope your dog knows how to escape the back take. Uh, is when you're escaping a back take, guys, especially against a, an experienced guy, they know how, what counters you will use, and they just keep cinching up the, uh, the, the technique and, and the positioning to a point where you, know, you may have no other options. So a lot of times when I get really into a lot of trouble, I switch direction. That's the most important thing. So you have to make sure that you uh, have calmness of mind when under pressure, that at some point it's like, okay, this is getting tighter, tighter, tighter. He's on me, I, I'm not escaping even though I'm doing the right things. I need to change direction. So let's look at uh, sort of a maybe Enrique's fancy back take from the guard. So, first thing is, as he's doing this, guys, the most important thing for me to do is to try to go perpendicular. It's interesting how much math comes into jiu-jitsu, isn't it? Geometry. So, I'm sure, hopefully, you guys know what perpendicular is, right? Um, we have literally a global audience, people from across the globe, India, Australia, South Africa, Europe. Latin America, uh, Canada, US. So depending on their school system, you may know this is perpendicular. This is lined up. So the worst thing I could possibly do is try to line up with him. So this allows him to threaten. If that's the case, guys, I will try, I, I tried to get rid of at least one of the hooks. All right? Because right now, my number one priority is to defend the choke. All right? So I, yes, I'm defending the position. But the position can turn into a submission so quickly that you, can, you have to protect your neck and you have to be constantly aware that at any point in time, you can sort of start to sink in the submission. So even though I'm trying to change the position, 
I constantly remember, okay, if I need to, hands back from the neck. You can't just kind of start to push with your hands off your neck too long. You may have to keep coming back. All right, let's look at it again. So again, I'm trying to get to a perpendicular position, all right? Uh, let's look at it again. So I'm already spin, I'm already trying to go perpendicular. Now Enrique will usually a lot of times try to come up on top. What I'm trying to do is get my foot on him. So now I can get by myself time. As he's coming up on top, I can push off and try to put him in guard. All right? Now, stay on me a little bit longer. So now let's look at the, the idea of changing direction. So right now, it's sort of the chain, sort of my, my counter worked right away. So I went from, he, he rolled into a rolling back cake. You, you know, this is very similar to from crab ride, from, from, uh, from barambolo or, or a rolling back cake. Uh, it's basically the same idea. So as soon as I tried to go perpendicular, if it works, great. Right now, it worked. But let's see what happens if he stays on me a little bit, okay? So right now he's staying on me. I'm trying to go perpendicular. He's already trying to position himself into both, both hooks in. So right now, I'm in danger. So right now my neck is in danger. You guys can see this, right? So notice that my hands went from battling the position to protecting my neck. So if he, try, if he tries to get his grip in, I'm looking, so right now, the closest submission that he has is a bow and arrow choke. So I'm already trying to put my head on the ground. So right now I'm forcing him into a follow-up, which I know is to get on top. And again, I'm looking to recover guard. And as you know, I'm looking to recover split guard, okay? So let's look at it again. So this time he stayed on. I'm trying. <laughs> yes, this worked too well. All right, this worked too well, guys. Um, so I just keep going for for a few minutes, guys, just to give different looks. How do I turn? There is, um, you know, there's some overarching principles that you need to keep in mind. Uh, but in general, it's very situational specific. Where do my feet go? Where do my hips go? How do I turn? Which direction do I go into? So he's staying on me. He got both hooks in. So I gotta protect my neck now. He got both hooks in. I'm trying to get one of the hooks off. Right now, I have a possibility I gotta make sure I protect my neck. So he, he has a dilemma right now. I'm laying on his lower leg, so it's not easy for him to come up on top, okay? So he has to remove it. So he, I know if he's gonna try to remove it, I have possibility of moving. So I'm gonna try to turn and come back on, back in the guard, all right? Now, try to stay on me so I have to change direction. So I hope this works, guys, because this is like we're going to the point where he's pretty close to nailing me. All right? So I'm constantly turning whichever direction I feel is the best way to escape. The minute or the second I feel that he's countering in that direction and that there's danger, I switch direction. There's very subtle changes. I don't know if you guys can see it on, on, uh, uh, on, the, on the video. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm constantly, you know, judging. As soon as I feel he's not countering, I'm going that direction. I decide to, then I commit to that direction. I'm 
changing direction, guys. I'm going out. When I say I'm going out, I'm going out, out of the submission, <laughs> into doing it to him. Not going out as in the past guy. So that's a couple of the ideas, guys. Uh, yes, with the ghee, there are some subtle differences. You've got to be more careful, more cognizant of the, the, the collar chokes. Um, also, the friction is greater, so therefore, uh, you have to move a little bit with a slightly greater urgency. Um, again, when you get in trouble, guys, I'm a fan of creating movement uh, because movements create opportunities for you to either, if you're on the uh, offensive side, to attack and finish the submission, but if you're on the defensive side, moving creates scrambles. Scrambles, by definition, almost are not a form of control, so when you're in a scramble, you have a better chance to escape. Even though he's sort of a step or two ahead of you, you have a chance to create a scramble and basically at least take one of the steps away from him, or at least half a step. Okay? So that's uh, some of the discussions on uh, back take es uh, escapes. Um, a lot of the, we talked about a lot of other, a little bit more details, not a little bit, a lot more in details on that video with Firas. Mike, do we have questions? Uh on Facebook, Adolfo Ferrando says, good morning from San Francisco. On Instagram, Leglock Library says, love these episodes. Thank you for sharing your beautiful jiu-jitsu. Thank you, guys. Great to hear from you. The next follow-up is from uh, Alvaro Quiroga on Instagram. He says, uh, if you could show the escape from north-south. Oh, another good question, guys. So escapes from north-south. Again, you have to realize that... When you're in danger, you have to deal with the priorities first. So always the priority is, am I in a position to be submitted? If, if so, then you have to deal with the submission first, position second, okay? If you're still not in that, uh, in, in, if, if you're still not in a position to be submitted, then you can deal with the position. This is sort of, it's a very fine line and experience sort of dictates us to, uh, to recognize that fine line. Uh, but it is an aspect of uh, jiu-jitsu that a lot of people, uh, sometimes due to an experience, uh, kind of miss. Uh, that when you, uh, uh, when you sort of uh, get in danger and you're still dealing with the position, I don't know if you remember some years ago there was a, uh, uh, you know, I think Matt Hughes got finished by BJ Penn. And, you know, BJ was on his back choking him and Matt was too busy stripping the hooks rather than defending the neck. So the priority is always sort of the submission. If you're in a position, if not in a position, defend the position. So let's look at a couple of different ways, all right? So Enrique's on north-south. So before, this is right now, this is a, uh, this is kind of a bad position for me, but anytime somebody's, I, I always try to feed his, his, his elbow. What a lot of times guys do, they just back up a little bit and swim. When that happens, I will. Tr I try to push myself out. So a lot of times, even though he has his head on me, it's always somewhat easy just to. And now my legs come. Yeah, that's a nice arm lock. You won't always get it, but again, if you're in a bad position, but you have an opportunity to threaten a submission, it can't be a sloppy submission. It has to be a real, real submission. A lot of times you may not get that submission, but you will have your opponent back off. So, again, north south. So, I, I will always try to, you know, try to control his arm because at some point, if I can control the arm, I can sort of start to attack possibly inverted triangles. We worked on that before. I forget which episode, maybe two. Uh, guys, all the episodes uh, are on, on, on Facebook. Uh, episodes three through and going forward is Instagram and YouTube and they're all labeled what we cover so if you have questions or specific things you can always look at the label what was covered and then you can if there's things that we did not cover you, you can always ask follow-up questions but so I always try to do this when as I'm trying to bring his he slightly backs off that's my chance to slide down and now I'm attacking. If he does, if he backs off, I'm back in guard now. Okay? So that's sort of the first defense. When you have your training partner opponent 
north south to 40, it's just a positional dominance, not necessarily threat of a submission. Now, if he starts to move up to my head to threaten a north south choke, if I can turn my head towards him, I'm going to get a chin strap grip. Now I'm going to use that chin strap grip. And guys, for those of you that have watched my guillotine videos, what is the single most important thing when you have a chin strap grip or if you're threatening guillotine or headlock? Shoulder forward. So if I can turn shoulder forward, now we have a scramble. I hope to prevail, but even if the guy gets scared, backs away, we're back to neutral. Okay? So again, if he starts to get worried about my grip being better than his, even though I'm on the bottom, and backs off, that's great. That's a great, great response from me because it allows me to basically, he's backing away, I'm going to try to get on top. Hopefully, he either allows me to get on top. If he doesn't, drives forward. I usually am pretty good about getting them overexposed. So let's look at it again. So this time, I turn. Guys, as soon as I'm being threatened with north-south, I turn. Notice, uh, if we can turn, notice where my right hand is. So it's already in the position that I was telling you, this is what I'm trying. But even though I failed, at the very least prevents him from, from locking up a stronger grip or using his other hand. All right? So I'm going to turn. Get a chin strap grip, now scissor, and now I'm creating scram. If I get on top, great. If he backs off, I'm going forward. This time you drive me back up. All right? Oh. <laughs> it's going to be okay. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> So now, again, he drove, drove me back down, but I managed to get him overexposed just a little bit. And that's what I'm looking for, guys. Anytime I have a back and forth where the guy is really good at defending, first of all, if a guy gets north-south, I mean, he's pretty good. Okay? But even if... if uh, if he doesn't get on the north-south, but he's really good at stripping a lot of things, a lot of my grips from my guard, and he's constantly uh, thwarting my attempts to tie him up on my terms, at some point I will pop up and drive into him. And one of two things is going to happen. He either drives me back down, but I'm looking to, as he's driving me back down, for overexposure on his arm or overexposure on his neck. Or he gets too scared and he accepts my sweep, and then I'm on top. And then I'm gonna hit him with a submission. So Mike, who's, uh, do we have any questions on this particular sequence? Uh, Jimmy T on YouTube says, hi Fox from Henzo Gracie Rockland. How you doing? And the next one is uh, David Feiner from Canada on Facebook asked, mount attack if someone has their arms glued to their chest. I did it, so. <laughs> so guys, this is actually uh, one of my favorite topics. And again, the techniques I'm gonna use, um, for those of you who know my game, my game is fairly universal. My game doesn't change dramatically between gi and no gi. Um, I use a lot of universal grips, which means I grip the wrist as opposed to the sleeve. Don't get me wrong, I, will, I, I usually like this kind of grip a lot. I will grip the back of the gi, but the, the change between gi and no gi is very subtle. So I always try to pay attention to, I don't want to have dramatic changes between my gi. Uh, I don't play a lot of lapel guard, um, but so because I, I, you know, I think once you play a lot of lapel guard and if that becomes an overwhelming part of your gi game, I, it doesn't trans, obviously it doesn't translate well into no gi. So if you have questions on lapel guard, guys, you know, uh, go to, this, to, to the ultimate source, which is Keenan. Uh, so let's look at this. Is, this is a very, very good position, a very good question. So if I mount the guy, 
And now, please don't submit me. So guys, I'm not a fan in training, okay? In a tournament, do whatever you find necessary. Do not be submitted, that's fine. But in training, do not pray for not, not to be submitted, okay? You already know how to do that before you start in jiu-jitsu. So if you're in Enrique's position, your job is to try to escape. If you don't escape well, you get caught, dust yourself off, and try something else. At least you learn how not to escape, all right? But so people will do this. So again, we, we go back to MMA. In MMA, this is not a viable defense. Self-defense, it is not a viable defense. In jiu-jitsu, it might be. Combat jiu-jitsu, no. So, <laughs> uh, so how do we deal with this position? Uh, so purely grappling perspective, same answer being you know, open. Uh, one of the two things I will do is, is I may get off. I may just get off. And now, if I like the guy, I say, listen, dude. And usually the, the prayer continues here, even if you pop cross-eyed. Um, hey, listen, you're pretty much caught. So you may at least try to use, you know, to figure out how to escape, and you may learn something. Or I'm going to start to apply pressure. All right? And uh, this is, I, I call the cyborg because I saw... Uh, Cyborg submit a black belt in the world no be finals with this. So, okay, you don't want to move. You may not get a submission, but you will get movement, that's for sure. He will start to defect. Okay? So that's one possible answer. But, Let's go back into mount, and what is the answer in the mount? So in mount, I want to isolate one arm or the other. Yes, there is. You can, you know, there's certain angles you can pressure the guy's hand down, uh, hand down to the mat, and start attacking. Um, I find that against bigger guys, especially if the guy is a little bit huskier, uh, it's easy for him to turn. So what I want to avoid is, is uh, you know kind of committing too much and, and wind up on the bottom. We're gonna go over that, what happens if, if, if that actually happens. So how do I isolate one of the arms, especially if the guy's like this or, you know, like this? If his elbows come up, it's a little bit easier to isolate, but let's keep your elbow down. So guys, one of the things I do is, I threaten an Ezekiel choke. Both of you know this, all right? So once you start to threaten me with an Ezekiel choke, the hand comes up. If it doesn't, you're gonna just choke it. Okay? So his hand's already keen, all right? A lot, a lot of times it actually comes, oh, you don't have to, I was, <laughs> I was hoping you were gonna go ahead. So, so he has to bring his hand inside. When the hand comes inside, I take it. This is the side I'm going to attack. So there's two attacks. One is I'm going to slide up. We did this arm lock uh, again, one of the episodes. The question that came was why don't we use it in MMA? The, the reason we don't use it in MMA so much because um, this, the possibility that you're gonna wind up on the bottom where the guy's pump, you know, ground and pounding. So that's the reason I would use it in grappling but not necessarily so much in MMA. So again, in MMA, what I would do is threaten the Ezekiel, slide up, and now I'm gonna slide up me. Guys, make sure you slide up high. This is not good. Slide up high, and now make this change over. As I'm making the change over, guys, I will grip his left arm with my right. One hand. Remember, that's on the arm lock discussion. I forget what episode that is. One hand, not both. So I can grip over or armpit. I'm going to place my elbow next to his hip, and this is pure misery. I don't know, can they see Enrique's face, Mike? 
No, nah, not yet. <laughs> now they can. So let's change the angle a little bit so they can see your reaction. So when I attack an amount, a mounted arm lock, gi, no gi, grappling, MMA, or, uh, or self-defense, I do not get off. Why? Wow. So I'm not a fan of this. So let me isolate. I'm not a fan of this, guys. The reason for that is if I screw this up or if he does something really good, he rips his arm. Just enough. Okay? Well, we're going there. <laughs> no punching in the gear. Uh, so, when I go for a mounted arm lock, I stay mounted. If I screw it up, I'm still mounted. I'm still in a dominant position. Okay? I may not have a submission, but I'm in a dominant position. I'm not about to exchange the possibility of a submission for an inferior position. And that goes double for MMA self-defense scenario. Okay? So, guys, when you mount, when you practice, when you drilling mount, you know how many times I've mounted people between drilling and, and live? It has to be thousands and thousands of times. You don't see me doing this. Right? Has anybody seen me do this in any of the videos? No. Because we're building muscle memory. So my muscle memory is going to be this. The average. I already have the arm isolated. I'd like to do this once I'm mounted, but suppose I didn't. Both his hands are, all right? So again, I'm gonna stay on the same side. I'm threatening an Ezekiel. As he's, as he's thwarting my Ezekiel by bringing his left arm inside my right, notice what happens to my knees. They start to splay, because right now I'm, I'm committing to, to, to an attack. So I may make sure that I have a, a good base briefly. Now. I'm going to slide up, okay? When I slide up, I'm leaning heavily over his head because the danger is that he bucks me to the back. If he goes, if he turns, go the other way. Go, 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 go. You break his arm. Not really, but you can, all right? So the greatest danger is that he bucks me to my back. Now you can see Enrique's face. So two grips, this one or this one, not this one. Remember, well, it's not gonna be that easy. <laughs> so guys, this is pure misery, but don't do this. Enrique's face. I weigh 160 pounds, guys, almost. But I feel like 300. I bring my leg over, and this is a strong break. Do not get off. Okay? Do we have questions on this technique? Gives Enrique a chance to recover his ribs. Adolfo asked uh, on Facebook, when you cyborg, is your knee on his clavicle or on his throat. Uh, I, I am for my kneecap, but you, you know, the best guy to probably look at, I'm sure, I, I know there's some clips of Cyborg doing this, so I just reverse engineered it, but that would be the best source to go to. But I usually aim to have my kneecap on his trachea, so that way my shin or kind of like the, this part of my knee is, is on the karate. And on YouTube, Yusuf asked, can you show the best way to do an Ezekiel and Nogi, thanks from, uh, thanks from fans. That's it. D, Nogi, D, Nogi, that's it. It's a different grip. I call it Iron Fist, I did it. Uh, again, there's a guillotine video with Firas and I on TriStar Gym Channel. Um, 
And I go over, it's, it's, it's briefly at the end, I call it Iron Fist, people call it Diesel Squeezel. Uh, I think uh, you know, it's, it's sort of like a, a modified is equal, but that's all it is, it's this versus this. Again, I tell you, as I explained to you guys before, I like to have universal game, meaning that my grips are not that dramatically different. D, no. So I hope that answers your question, guys. We're out of time, yes, Mike? Adolfo, uh, as a follow-up, does that mounted armbar require much flexibility? No. But it's, flexibility is good because that means you can lean more forward and you can sort of, this is the greatest, this is when you can greatest risk when you're doing this. This switch over. So guys, again, I know I, I haven't done a whole lot of, a um, uh, whole lot of uh, uh, solo drills and the reason for that is because I think now, uh, literally there's so many possible, so many links, uh, John Danaher, is, is, you know, I would, he offered it for free, so guys, take advantage of that. John is an amazing teacher. Uh, take advantage of that. But there's others that are offering solo drills. So I'm moving away from that. I also uh, believe that probably people that have been quarantined at this point, they either voluntarily or involuntarily drafted some of their family members. So now more people have people in their circle of contact um, to play with. So, but this one you could do. So I'm mounted, slide up. This is the changeover. So you can drill that solo and then just bring the home over. Guys, public service announcement. I know we're out of time, but really quick. Guys, use your brains as far as circle of contact. Like I said, Mike does social media marketing. Enrique, I've been training with on a da daily basis. That's why they chose him to do this filming with me. Basically, if one of us has it, the other one has it, and we have extremely small circle of contact. That said, when you go to a supermarket, when you go ask a guy a question, you can ask from six to seven feet away. There is no reason unless you're hard of hearing to come here, because now you just got into this guy's circle of contact. So use your brains, use your heads. Yeah, we know, you can use it for jujitsu too. Guys, see you tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Be well.